people um, onto our books under a three-year deal, I understand. And he looks like a, a nice, um, from what they're all saying, that um, he seems to be, we're grooming him to be Eddie's replacement. Yeah, apparently. That, uh, seems... Sorry, mm -hmm. Michael, you go. I was just going to say, apparently he uh, uh, he hasn't got amazing speed, but apparently he's got very good reflexes and uh, very difficult to tackle once he's got the ball. And uh, at this stage of his career, he's obviously hasn't got a big tank. Uh, so, he, yeah, he's basically a forward pocket at the moment. Whether he'll develop into more than that over time, you know, with a few pre-seasons with us, I don't know. But that's, so basically, I think what Nicky said is right. At this stage, he, he'll be groomed by Eddie just to be a, a forward pocket and, and we'll just see where it goes from there. He's also yeah, based was... the way he's he's admitted he's based the way he plays. He's looked at Eddie and he's tried to emulate that. That seems to be the read on him. He seems to uh, struggle for um, a yard of pace, but a uh, very, very clever uh, player and uh, buys himself plenty of time with, uh, with moves. So uh, we'll see how he goes. Um, and now I, th I thought it was kind of in interesting. We've had the five-minute fireman. We've now got the two-minute teacher uh, in Josh <laughs> Franco, who went, uh, who decided he didn't want to look after our forwards anymore. He he needs to go and concentrate on his teaching. Well, that didn't last very long because he got named as part of the Gold Coast Suns uh, coaching panel, which is interesting because it's a development role. Um, it's not officially one of the co assistant coaching roles, so I think that might be how they're getting around that he broke a contract with us and normally there's that. What? That he's not supposed to. We, I, may, have an, we may have an understanding with him, Nikki. We may do. We may do. I would quite like it if we did and something came of it, but it's a bit iffy. <laughs> Doesn't smell good right now. Well, that's the hope. Uh, they also that's the hope, up... isn't it? Yeah, that's the hope. But mm, we'll wait and see. They are also another AFL-controlled uh, entity because of the stuff-ups they've made. Um, what... So we had a, a bit of a fire sale going on at GWS um, that a few players needed to be cleared out. Now, I did see somebody made a, uh, a comment which was, I thought, quite interesting was that We've had the big deals being held up, which are like Shiel, um, et cetera, and I think Loby. And, but now with GWS has actually cleared out a whole lot of their large salary that they've had, there now isn't that pressure that those other clubs who are trying to get these big name players in like Shiel, who you're pretty sure that um, GWS would really like to keep if they could because he, he compliments the rest of the other midfielders that they, they still do have. That they've, yeah, gotten wonder... rid of, they've, got, they've gotten rid of that salary pressure. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I agree with you, Nikki. Uh, or whether it's even just impacting on their trade negotiations just by not having the um, salary cap pressure, you know, so they don't have to accept unders as well. The other thing too is, you know, moving on Shiel and Scully early means that they probably can pour a bit more cash and focusing to make sure they keep Kelly and Coniglio and, um, and a couple of those other boys as well. So I think it's a, a strategy rather than just a, uh, rather than just a, you know how weird it looks from the outside. Well, the, to me, from the outside, and I know nothing of the inside. So um, the fact that the the press keep writing that they've got to clear clear away something like one and a half million to two million dollars of salary cap because they're going to be otherwise they'll be in excess of it for next year. If that is actually factually correct, then I think that GWS have acted absolutely responsibly to end up in the position that they currently are in, where they've had a, a pick one, a pick six, a pick seven, and the total for, the, for those three players, you know, it wouldn't buy you a, an airfare to bloody Melbourne. It's that bloody small. Um, it's just, I think it's quite, quite disgraceful. And uh, I'm sure that if Adelaide did that, we'd probably be uh, uh, seen as tampering with the draft. Um, my question is, what's the AFL doing? That They're the ones who monitor the salary cap. They're the ones who have a look at all the contracts. They know all the contracts. Every contract has to go through AFL House. It gets ticked off there. 
course they know there's some bonuses or things like that so that makes your salary cap a bit fluid and then you have to do the reporting back to the AFL and the AFL allows you a 5% little leeway. You can undersell, you can underpay by 5% one year if, or I mean over by one year, but you have to be under by that 5% the following year. If it's got to that stage that it's $2 million at least, where's the AFL actually in this and not monitoring and where's the fines for GWS? That's exactly what my point. That was the whole point, Nikki. Yeah. Well, the, the only, the only, the only sort of rider on that, I think, is, um, you know, were they going all in to win a flag over the last couple of years? And I think they probably were. And uh, you know, this year was probably their year, um, but they were crippled by injuries all the way through it and never quite got together. Um, and I reckon they've just, uh, 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 yeah, they've just sort of uh, slipped through to the winds. Yeah, I reckon you're right, Donkey. I don't think that uh, uh, it was going to be uh, one great big crash uh, attempt at it and come hell, come high water, and we'll worry about the consequences afterwards. And unfortunately for them, it, they never really got into first gear for that because of the fact that, as you say, uh, injuries are key players for, lo- for a, a long period of time, e.g. Scully, one game for the year. Um yeah, it, it, they were crippled with injuries and they kept battling on because they've had such good, uh, they've had such good opportunities for drafting, but um, they weren't didn't have all their A graders out there. And I think what you said is probably on the money, uh, Donkey. They took a bit of a gamble, uh, knowing that they'd have to take a hit at the end of the year. Shall we just um, switch it back to the Crows for a moment? What do we think? Um... Our um, our draft position is going to look like. I think that we we probably all agree that we're done in terms of um, of players, uh, unless we have to trade out Daniel Tarley tomorrow. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, I think well, we're pretty there's much somebody else as well. <laughs> Matty Crouch. Um, uh, good information that uh, is certainly on the table is um, Jake Kelly now. The reports are that that's not going to happen, That, uh, but that won't be because we weren't prepared to trade him out. It's because we haven't got um, offers in. So that, but that is still a day to go. So there's still a potential for a player trade there, but that's a player out. I'm not sure that anybody else is coming in. There was some talk about Sam Mays as part of a potential deal with Pick 5, but um, I think that um, the better view now is that he may well end up at, uh, at Port Power. Um, I'm not sure if you know the story of Sam, but he... Um, is uh, seeking a compassionate trade back home. He has some family illness, um, his mother in particular, and um, is looking to get back to Adelaide for those reasons. And Brisbane will facilitate a trade back home for him. So it just depends which uh, club he gets to. Um, but uh, I think that um, we could probably all be agreed that where we are now is is uh, down to the draft picks. And um, uh, I guess the potential to either get involved in the, the Beams, Neil, Hogan, Pick five, May pick five, sort of set up, or um, whether there's any potential to uh, grab St Kilda's pick um, or the Gold Coast pick two and three. That's uh, where we're at. What are people's thoughts? Well, the interesting thing about it is that um, I think you're right in terms of the players coming in. I don't. I, there's obviously no players coming in. It'll be a question of, um, uh, and I, I haven't actually caught up with this Talia thing. Talia thing. What is the what, what did the drunk say? Oh, I was just a tweet from Ricky Nixon tonight, just saying that um, that uh, Daniel Tar- um, they'll be looking to trade Daniel Talia out to Geelong tomorrow. And what will we be we'll be getting in return for that? Well, we didn't. Funnily enough, he didn't go into that. So, uh, yeah, I think limited information from the old chicken. No, it wouldn't put much cred there. Um, no, I think as you said, I think the player wise, we've probably done. Um, and the interesting thing is, we're actually a player. Well, we've got two potential players coming in because uh, we, and but we've got a a grader going out in terms of McGovern. He was uh, definitely a best twenty-two player and at his best, one of the better players. So you could argue that we're slightly weaker than we were before the draft, and how the two new boys coming in, and you know, and how draft picks come. That's an, an unknown at this stage. So. On the playing stock that we had last year, we're currently a little bit weaker. So it comes back to what we're going to get about out of the draft. Then the big question, as you said, Pete, was 
do we settle with what we've got, the four we've got, which uh, I have no doubt, um, you know, we, we've been very good with our recruitment and I can't see why we wouldn't have, uh, you know, <laughs> he hadn't lost his ability, I wouldn't think. And, uh, or do we, uh, which probably will be the case, I think if that big major trade goes through and pick five revolves all the way around, it ends up back with Gold Coast, which gives them two, three, and five. And I would think that we would try and say to them, well, look, um, we'd, they'd probably try and maybe trade us, they, they might try to pick five, uh, but we'd be trying to get pick three uh, out of them. Uh, they'd be the one we'd be trying to target, and they might just do it for the right thing. So uh it might end up we might only end up with two or three picks in the draft i oh, will have to have three um so uh yeah well, I what could... gets us pick three becca well i mean i pick... could see you know eight and 13 or eight and 16 sort of you know the four five but pick two and three um particularly when gold coast have been rumored to be looking to pair a let's say a lacocious and a rosy um the, the other thing i found out today is that um young uh, burgess that they picked up from westies in the um um you know the uh yep. being able to reserve a state player so he's a, a, a evidently a, a quite a close friend of um isaac rankin and so gold coast i'm just wondering if they're you know this this ploy of trying to get um you know friends uh, up there to, uh, to, to 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 help beat the go home factor that well, makes a lot of sense yeah, and they may well do that. And they might well do that, which in that case, I still think that they may be open to trading one of those picks uh, if it produces two picks. Because um, they they really, I mean, um, Lloyd was totally correct when he said this, they are probably going to field the worst AFL team ever next year. And uh, they really do need uh, talent coming in there, be it in terms of established talent or uh, uh, draft picks and some very promising and as many as possible because they're going to be a, a very piss poor team next year and on paper unlikely to win any if if many games at all so uh, i i think there is an opportunity is there to get in underneath port adelaide and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, get look, I, I wouldn't care which one we got out of those three boys lacocious has his uh, virtues and Rankin has his virtues, and Rosie has an all-round virtue. So, uh, I... but does eight and does eight? What I'm the question I'm asking um, is: Does eight and thirteen get you two or three? It doesn't get you any of those. Not those three. So, that's, so how do we get? You were talking about getting three off a of Gold Coast. How do we? How do we get that? I'm talking about pick three. Yeah. So, how do we get it? Oh, well, I think Macca means pick three people, don't you, Macca? Or no, no. Uh, oh. I, to, to get, we'll have to get one of those. I, mean, I know we can. I know we can ask for it. But we've got to pay for it. Yeah, and and it might well be eight and thirteen. Right. Okay. In fact, it yeah. probably would be. You think eight and thirteen gets us two, three? No. I don't know. I'm I'm just asking. It might be eight, thirteen, and twenty-one. But, yeah. Um, I don't know that I like that. Well, I think and, I feel like yeah. there's too many pieces then, for one piece back in. Well, and that's what you have to weigh up. And uh, you know, I'm. Thank God it's not me because part of me says don't trade. I'm happy with what we've got because we'll end up with four good players. And then I see uh, those three South Australian boys and they are all very, very good players and, and I'd be amazed if, if they didn't follow, you know, and end up being very good players long term. So the other part of me says, well, if we could get it for two uh, draft picks, um, I, w I would do it. Um, for three, yeah, then you, I can understand why um donkey reacted as he did because you, you cut yourself pretty fine and i don't know how they're thinking i don't know anybody uh, the crows are very quiet i don't know anybody knows what they're thinking and i think they're very much uh, i suspect there would be a lot of meetings going on probably right now uh between hamish and justin reed and the rest of our list management committee and going through what they've heard what they think the deals are likely to come down to tomorrow can we help any of those deals to get something back that we want? Or are we going to be satisfied to sit, wait, maybe do some, wait and see if anybody approaches us regarding draft um, trading picks during the time or go to the draft night 
with those four picks, essentially top the uh, first round picks. And I did, and I get the impression that that's what might happen mm-hmm. uh, with the way that Reed spoke at the um, Connor Sports Breakfast, where he was said, "Oh, you've you've got pick eight and thirteen, and he piped up, "Yeah, we've got sixteen and twenty one as well." Um, and he, he had a little bit of fun regarding it, but he kind of gently reminded, no, 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 we've got four. We've got four picks. We don't just have two. We've got four we can play around with here. He was subtly letting everyone, well, not that subtly, letting everybody else know what we had to play with. Yeah, and, and, and four picks all higher than what we took Matt Crouch with. That's correct. Yeah, and I just think, for me, I trust Hamish with whatever he's going to do. He has runs on the board. To give him four first-round picks, I mean, it's, it's, it's just like, holy crap, what's he going to do? Because he's really good at pulling the specials out. Um, I I would like to see that happen, but I also have liked what Justin Reid has done um, with this with this year's draft picks. He has been good this year. No argument this year. The interesting thing uh, also is um, in all of this, of course, is the order of selection um, and or the players um, and ha- how it's, that's reflected with the players um, and who the clubs are after. I mean, uh, there's been speculation as to Gold Coast whether they want the King Brothers or uh, whether they want um, the South Australian lads. They end up with... You know, if they end up with two, three, and five, they could get all of Lacocious, Rankin, and Rosie and get them all up there. Um, scary thought. Um, so it'd be interesting to see whether uh, on, um, how the trading reflects the players that they want because if they want the King brothers, then um, they're not going to be um, probably too fussed about moving down a little bit because uh, uh, there's no way in the world we'd take those, uh, those guys ahead of the South Australian lads. So interesting to see how that plays out and the players, the actual players that they want. Just to add to what you, you said then, Pete, was the fact that the uh, the Port Adelaide uh, uh, list manager coming out and making the comments uh, quite openly, that, which I was absolutely startled that he did, that, you know, that we'll let the, the Gold Coast take him, that we'll have a crack at him in, uh, after a couple of years. Um, and, uh, you know, he's trying to, apparently they're trying to say now that he was said in jest, but I've, I've, seen the interview, I've seen the interview live and, uh, not when I say live, on tape, and he wasn't jesting. I think he was deadly serious. And um, and on that, I reckon just saying what we we all think. Did Reed say it earlier as well? Because I saw a report initially that Reed had said it, and then later on people were going, "Oh, Chris Davies said it." And I, I've seen Chris Davies say it, but I haven't seen Reed, Reed say it. Reed's actually been very, very careful not to say anything wrong because they he got the blame in the. Uh, the first time we had a uh, had a crack uh, to get Gibbs, and that was actually uh, quite unfair, really, because um, Carlton pretending that they'd never heard about it, which was absolute crap, because they had been communicating or been trying to communicate non-stop with Carlton without any response from them. Um, but because he got such a a public uh, lambasting at that time for uh, opening allegedly opening his mouth when he shouldn't have. I noticed that Reed is very, very hard to get anything out of it all at the moment. So he certainly hadn't said that, Nicky. One little bit of um, uh, information that I did come across. And um, as you know, we don't, uh, on the Crowcast, always get a lot of information. But by and large, when we do get some, it's generally pretty good. Um, and um, I did get, uh, happen across some information that uh, in this trade period, there's been a lot of speculation about what we're doing about our ruck stocks. Um, and why we aren't going after for uh, going after Ruckman. Um, the info that I got was that we certainly are in the market for a Ruckman. We are targeting, uh, particularly targeting um, a Ruckman, and, um, but here's a Ruckman that comes out of contract at the end of next year. Um, and so a lot of the um, a significant uh, part of the groundwork is being done in this trade period um, to secure... Uh, the services at the end of the 2019 season in that trade period. Um, so um, keep your eye out for that one. Um, I've been, uh, I'm under threat of death uh, for giving out the name, so I won't. Um, but um, suffice to say that um, 
I'm pretty confident that we are um, a long way down the track of um, securing the services of um, a ruckman that's running around playing league footy um, this year and next, and um, he'll be a very good acquisition to our side. I was going to say, Pete, you're a man of pretty high standards. Would, would, would you be happy with what we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Be, be, be a very good addition to our side. He's uh, He'll be a player that... Um, uh, for Ruckman is still relatively young and by the time he gets to us for the 2020 season he'll be uh, right in his prime so I'm um, happy with that and um, yeah so we'll watch that one with interest. We have pricked my interest. Do you, do you think we'll mm. take it? What about in the draft itself? Do, do you think that we would uh, either in the draft or in the rookie draft take a Ruckman at all? I, I, think, know, we would. I, I think we would. I think we fought from Centrals. I don't th- I don't, well, maybe in the rookie draft, possibly. But you, don't forget, we've still got a number of players on the rookie list. I mean, um, Nicky, you Three. know better than me, but uh, we've still got Cam Ellis almost on the rookie list. Lockie Murphy, I think, is on the rookie list. Yep. And, um, Three, we Hunter. have. So we've got but Hunter, has, no, to, no, Hunter no. has to come off, though. Yeah. Because no. he's been on the rookie list for three years. So if we keep him, he's got to go onto the main list, no, I don't think which I think is – which I think is why we've been having some funny buggers. That pick 68, even though we had 72, was a really weird thing for us to do. So we've still got those two very, very late picks, which if we're going to upgrade a rookie, we nominate it and it goes to one of those picks. But are we going to have... I think there might be something doing there. I'm not sure whether it will be Hunter. I don't, I don't know if we have the, we'll have the room. And I mean, I, I think we've got to, we need to, depending if we keep... Cheney and um, Signorello. We're going to have. Um, I don't we... think we're going to keep Signorello. No, because I, not, I don't, and I don't think we're going to keep Cheney either. I think uh, Cheney. Why we haven't heard anything about Cheney is with Jake Kelly being on the on the, on the market. On the block, yeah. If he went, I was pretty sure Cheney was going to get a year contract. Mm. He was it, that was security. Because if we if we assume that let's just say for a moment we assume those two players were staying on the list. That meant that we had six spots, two of which have been taken up by McAdam now and Stengel. So that leaves us four. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're not going to go late into the draft. Uh, 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 but uh, other than if those four draft picks that we have are somehow turned into three picks if we can climb up the order. So that's a potential as well. So, But at the moment, those four draft picks fill the last four spots unless we delist one or both of Cheney and Signorello to open up two more spots. Uh, so you'd think that they would have to upgrade Hunter because otherwise we'll only have O'Brien and Source on the list for next year. So and Himmel, uh, they did mention Himmelberg. Well, yeah, Himmelberg as well, I guess, um, as a backup. But um, So I, I can't would... imagine that they would get rid of Hunter uh, at this stage. No, yes. I re- I I'm reckon not so. as down on Hunter as other people. I, I think oh, he no, I think he's a good could actually do right? okay. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not down on him. I just very, try to work out. Very unlikely spot. to be, yeah. Very unlikely to be, an, you know, an A grade ruckman, though. Very unlikely. Um, no, so, but, but in answer to your question, Mac, like, I don't think we go to the draft for ruckman, no. Right, because uh, coming back to Signorella, I, I reckon I've got more chance of growing feathers and flying than he has of saying on our list because to me he just hasn't shown enough to be there. He's he's just, uh, well, a list clogger in my opinion. No time. Yeah, I I have not been. I know there's certain people on the big footy board, one in particular who's very much a G for him, but I've watched him develop and nah. No, he hasn't come along like he should have. You know, you know. He, oh no, his disposal is atrocious, and we've tried to fix it, and we have fixed it a little bit, but it's still well below par. Yeah, well, <laughs> somebody asked me, do I quack? <laughs> I hope I don't have to grow those bloody feathers. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I just can't uh, see Senorillo surviving. And uh, Cheney is just a chance, and I think it all depends on uh, what uh, Pete was saying, you know, how many do we actually end up, uh, how many vacancies we end up, whether we do condense our number of draft picks down, which would uh, mean that... It could mean one survives, and that would be cheating if any of those two survive. Um, uh, or, as you say, Nicky, whether they pro- whether they promote somebody onto the main list. But um, Hunter, I think, more likely is would be delisted, and, the, and nobody's going to go after him. And then, if we wanted to keep him around, we could 
then re-rooking him a third time if nobody else takes him when we do, do the rookie draft. Mm. What does? No, I don't um, think we're allowed to. What yes, does everybody think? What does everybody think of the um, the new live trading coming in? I was keen to get everybody's thoughts on that. Um, uh, obviously, uh, once the trading period closes at eight thirty tomorrow, um, uh, the players, the trading of players stops, but um, draft picks can still be traded right up until the call of the draft. How do you think that's going to operate? And I, and I mean, Kane Corn said last night he thought that we were a Monty to be involved in live trading of draft picks. We and Port Adelaide would be the most two likely teams, and Port Adelaide have actually weakened themselves so much. I don't know whether they can afford to, to weaken themselves much more because with pick six, uh, even if they didn't get one of the South Australian boys, they would get a, a good draft pick, a, a good player uh, of quality at that position. They're talking about the magnificent seven or something at the top that uh, are cut above the rest. That if um, if that is the case, and uh, history shows that uh, so many times the people that are nominated to be in the top 10 and they regard the best 10 prove not to be that. But, um, I mean, not all of them. Uh, it, could only, so, it could only be the Crows in a year of having a magnificent seven that we have big eight. At, uh, when I, that's very Crows-like, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> very Crows-like. Yeah. We, we might get another Van Burlo. <laughs> well... Look, if, if all the rubbish you can be in Bula, where did gave the boy play? He paid 200 on, didn't he? He did. And he was, okay, he wasn't a star, but he was still a bloody good AFL footballer. And a very brave one at that too. Oh, God, yes. I remember him breaking his collarbone up at Brisbane. I was at the game um, where he did it, went in for the, the sideways bump, broke his collarbone grabbed it, but then realised that there were two Brisbane players and the ball was still there. He went for the ball, handballed it out, grabbed his shoulder again and then ran off and went, oh, I kind of can't lift it. Mm. No, he, he, look, he, did, he copped a lot in his latter years, VB, but, you know, I think overall he, 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 was, he was reasonable. Um, PJ raises a good point, though. It won't be just necessarily ourselves in Port Adelaide because uh, he thinks that maybe in the 40s and 50s teams will see a player at 20 on their list that flipped past the 40 and they want to nab it, nab them. Yeah. So, and th that is quite possible, PJ. I think, you know, it is a good point. Yeah, I watched uh, a fair bit of NBA drafting and that's it's quite often the, um, the the 20 through to 40 range that sort of seem to move around a bit more because it's, um, it's where the value picks are. So uh, I, think it, I think it'll be there. I think it's also interesting the way that we've set ourselves up, you know, with, um, with Hunter, Sig and uh, Cheney all or possibly uh, playing or, or possibly on the block. Um, and it just depends on whether, you know, we can actually exercise. If we take four picks of the draft, then a couple of those boys are not playing for us next year. And if we have, we trade them all up for, you know, three, two and three, um, then uh, then I don't see, that, you know, then those boys sort of get a bit of a reprieve. I think that's the, I think that's the strategy. At least we haven't spent all our bungers in the first half an hour. It's pretty weird, isn't it? If you're a professional footballer and, and uh, you're trying to make plans for your uh, for your career, and uh, you've got to sit there on draft night and watch the TV with a calculator and work out how many players your your club's going to pick and what ends up happening, and knowing that if there's uh, more than a certain amount that are picked, we, that, that must just mean that I'm off the I'm off the list. <laughs> it's pretty uh, pretty difficult night watching TV. Well, you know, yeah. just on a slightly it's be long because it's just that first round. So if we still have pick twenty one. They get to the end of the first round and we're like, oh, okay, pick 21. We kind of know not... possibly who we're going to go for and it's just going to stop. Is that all they're doing on night one, just pick yeah. on the first round? And it's, yeah. a, lo and it's a long telecast as well. So I think the AFL is going to want all this um, sort of trading going on, except there's only apparently five minutes. And I'm like, well, how can you just do round one with such a long telecast that's scheduled? when there's only 19 picks going to happen. There are going to be a lot of advertisements for, I reckon Maccas will launch a new burger. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll have some invites to health spas. There'll be, uh, we'll have, you know, 15 minute diatribes from Sam McClure. It's going to be fantastic. Talking about Maccas, I, I was just going to say, I went to Maccas for the first time yesterday for a couple of years. It'll be many years before I go back again. Well, I don't know what may have made me go there. It was horrible. Just uh, on the chat to PJ Crow saying that um, 
Trade Radio have just tweeted out hashtag mega deal. So uh, that could be on the cards. And um, Moylee saying about pick five going around the country, I agree with you. We would like to see some frequent flyer points attached to pick five. I reckon it's going to go uh, all the way around. And my great fear is that it will end up on the Gold Coast um, plate. And um, uh, and with two, three and five, they will quite easily be able to wrap, it, wrap up our three South Australian stars, uh, which would be a real uh, kick. But uh, that may be uh, the way it goes. Well, if you're going to get them to go to any club, though, it's it's a say to say, if, if they, the whole three of them go to the one club, um, you wouldn't want it to be Essendon or you wouldn't want it to be uh, uh, Hawthorne or a good club like that. And then if they're going to go to the Gold Coast, um, you've got a reasonable, reasonably good uh, chance of uh, getting getting at least one of them back, in my opinion, anyhow. Um, I did, the question was asked what I got at Macca's. Uh, that great big thick bloody burger, whatever it's called. The thick uh, burger. No, no. <laughs> the, uh, the, Angus, the, Angus, the Angus burger it was. Angus okay, burger. Angus oh, burger. yeah. Piece of, piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> Look, if you're going to go to Macca's, it's the, uh, it's the double quarter pounder. You need that. You need the uh, you need the ketchup and mustard and the pickles there because um, I'm pretty sure they've got where... That that's a nice indictment on them. You've got there's different rumours going on about um, Hogan and Frio, what Melbourne want. Then you've got Lobie that's supposed to also somehow get over there. Uh, you've got the issue with Tim Kelly from Geelong. You've got the Neil to Brisbane, and they're both kind of balking at that. You've got Shield that somehow has to get to Hawthorne. Well, I think I think the mega deal is is going to be made down to Melbourne, <clears throat> and um, they'll send Hogan across to Fremantle. Fremantle will send Neil to Brisbane for for five, and then five will go back up over to Melbourne to pay off for Hogan, and then um, five goes from Melbourne to Gold Coast to P- pay for May. PJ is saying the Age are reporting that Port Adelaide have picked five. That's what? horrible. If that, that's horrible if that's true. That um, would just about cause me to uh, pull the plug out tonight, if that's the case. That is a bad, bad result for us, oh, if that's that. the case. PJ, if you can post anything else from that age article, I'd be grateful, mate. But um, I'm this... reading it now. It must be 6 and 10 or something like that, hey? Jeez. Well, he's saying that they definitely say they've got it, so... Um, so, so here is the, what they um, – Neil would become a lion that sends five and perhaps another pick to Fremantle. Then Hogan um, – we'll part with Hogan for six and 23 and pass that selection on to Gold Coast for May. So they end up with two, three and six. Um, Wingard will go to Hawthorne exchange for Ryan Burton in 15 and possibly something else. Paul eventually ending up with pick five and losing pick six. They would also receive pick 15. They would somehow still receive pick. I think they'd have to use pick 15. I don't know. They, have they lost pick 10, though? They must have lost pick 10 they, as they well. They would have to lose pick 10. Um, then Lobs moved to Freeman to bring the Giants to the deal, but this appears contingent on Collingwood acquiring beams in a trade that would let the Nines pick 18. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So well, Brisbane apparently demanded two first rounders for Beams, and then want them both this year, and they're not going to give any second round picks back. 
So yeah, well, they, they gave up pick five. They gave up pick five to get Beams in the first place. So it's not like they didn't pay even though we wanted to go up there. Like it's it, it's outrageous that Collingwood would think they can get away with not doing it. So, so that gets put that'll get Port Rosie, unless we can get four. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I know that they're I know that they're hard on for Rosie and Rankin. <laughs> But that's the thing is if we know who some of the other ones are picking, et cetera, that's when the your conversations that you've been having with St Kilda are about getting four. And so somehow that will guarantee them still getting Max King and nobody so that, else so, getting him. So PJ says they've sent Homsch and pick six for pick five. God um, almighty. Homsch so I assume they keep pick ten. So that well, makes it's, only pick... A one, it's only a one pick upgrade, but... So it's, pick five uh, will it cost them Peter sorry mate. Pick five will cost them Pittard, um, Polek and Homsch. Yeah. That's ridiculous for one player. Mm. Wow. Well, Peter, I, I don't know. I don't know. Homsch Hom- couldn't make their side this year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's interesting. PJ Crows, TLA sports management control basically all of the players involved in this. Is that that Colin Young book? Wow. Well, Well. and also, (laughs) as a DSG says, live trading just becomes real. (laughs) Yes. Wow. That's good. It's sort of flattened us all a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, it has a bit. We've gone very quiet. And it's absorbing, I think. But when when you've got a big deal like that, one little part of it falling over can cause a huge spanner in the wax. To Gavin Kemp, why is pick five so important uh, when they've got six? Well, it just means that we can't get five. Um, and so each time Port um, creep up that that draft order, uh, it's um, less and less of an opportunity for us to get involved in some kind of deal which will land us uh, in front of them. So that now we're now down to pick potentially, what, pick four or pick three possibly. Correct. Yeah, the, that, that's all we've got left now. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to use a different sporting analogy here, and hoping this is what's happening for us. Which is, you know, when you're in, in the, doing the cycling and the sprint races and the velodromes there, and they sort of, they stop and then they edge and one like, and whoever goes first sort of has the disadvantage because they've got to, the other person can roll out behind them. Hopefully, that's what we're doing right now. We're waiting for them to spend all their capital, and then we sweep in right at the end. Yeah, ever the eternal but uh... but, yeah, but as you as you've said, Donkey. Okay, we we kind of we've been seduced by the fact that there's these really good South Australian players, but there's still other quality players in this draft. No, but that's the height, Nikki. That the the thing is is that there's this, always this um, this argument about you know do you take best available talent. Or do you look at you know a homegrown player and 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 negate the risk of the go home factor and get a, perhaps a bit lesser talent to offset the go home factor? And this year is one of those just you know once in a decade year where the talent uh, equals uh, the negation of the home go home factor. It, it, it's all rolled into one. So there's no there's no question on the talent. It is they are at the absolute high end of the talent order. Not only that, but they're South Australian. And so there's no, you know, if, if we've, if we've fluffed this, then there's no getting around the fact that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real missed opportunity. Well, there's no doubt about that. It, well, it is, but what would we have had to have sold to get it? Because as Donkey said, they've sold Wingard, they've sold Polak, they've sold Pittard, they've sold Homsch. All they're doing is getting rid of depth. They're just pairing off depth. Yeah, but they don't have depth. We know they don't have depth. They got rid of actually first quality players. They got rid of young first quality players. They've got old. Homsch and Pittard had barely played last year. Yeah, there's nothing Uh, lost there. Injured. Nothing lost there. Yeah, but in their side, that was actually some of their quality, unfortunately. No, the quality... It shows you what their depth is actually like. They, they've had to get rid of a whole lot that I I don't think we would have been happy with. 
So if you think Polak, so who's his equivalent? Oh, and McGovern our side that we've given him. McGovern, it could actually be Atkins. No, oh, Polak's a little bit higher up than that, I think. Uh, he was probably... So Seedsman well... fully fit or a Smith if he was playing on the wing? Would you be happy with Smith being no, I wouldn't. shunted out? No, no. Uh, and if I was Port, uh, if I was a Port support, I, I certainly would not be happy uh, about losing uh, both um, the two top players that they have and, and getting only one good player back for it. So um, I, I, th- I don't think they, they, they may have won this, uh, you know, I've got the bigger penis than you have type thing and they may get the South Australian boy, but they may not have necessarily win the war by doing it because, you know, they've lost two very good players and they get one potentially good player back. Yeah, and, and that's that's the way I'm looking at it, is that we're going to be kind of like, <gasps> if it, this does eventuate, going, oh, my God, they've beaten us and everything else because we see that, you know, this is our competitor within it our own home state, but we, we're aiming to get back in a grand final and to win it and to do it next year. Yeah. So I'm looking yeah. at that bigger picture. Yeah, no, this is... I would, I would wait a little bit further back to see what happens. I, I'm going to wait until draft night to see, to see yeah. what happens. But, but I'll tell you what, if, if we're within, you know, and we are in striking distance... Because at the end of the day, our hand wasn't particularly worse um, than Ports, and they've been able to do two trades: one to get themselves into five, um, and then and then they've been able to get themselves into, into uh, sorry into six, and then they've been able to get themselves into five, and, and we've done nothing. Mm. So we'll just wait and see. It'll keep the powder dry. I mean, you know, we've got until draft night, but I will be bitterly, bitterly disappointed if we can't get that pick four or possibly pick three, and get one of. Um, uh, the South Australian lads, because those three, both, all three of those kids, are supremely talented kids. They are at the absolute oh, yeah, they are. top draw of talent, and they are South Australians that that, that that will stay in South Australia. Let's say we do what you said, Pete. Which one would you go for? I'd go out of the three of them. Yep. Yeah. What's your ranking? One, two, three. Uh, my ranking one, two, three would be Lacocious at one. Uh, Rosie at two and Rankin at three. Yeah. What? Well, what? The, the other sort of hypothetical I want to post everyone. So we've got we've got eight, thirteen, sixteen, twenty-one. If we were to trade up to pick four, um, what would people be wanting to trade for that? I, 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 my my thoughts are that I'd be happy if we take if we pick twice in the before twenty-one. So if we spent three picks to get one pick. Um, and then we still pick, you know, still have twenty one in the hand. I'd actually be quite happy with that if uh, if it meant that we were guaranteed one of those three blokes. So, what would you be prepared to give up? So they get a donkey. I'd be prepared to pay eight, thirteen, and sixteen to make sure that we got to four or four or higher. What do you about you, Pete? Yeah, I'd probably do it. You'd give up the three. I think so. That way, we're still picking two kids, or we're still picking two. Players under, you know, under in the top twenty-five. Who, who, one of them sorry, Nikki, who's Chicken Little? Oh, <laughs> sky is falling. <laughs> it's just no, but someone needs to not be Chicken Little. <laughs> um, it was a comment in the chat was that they uh, they were appreciating my optimism um, in what I was saying, and I responded to that while saying that somebody doesn't need. One of us doesn't need to be chicken. You're referring one to of, one of you're, refer, you're referring to me, Michael, because I did no, say I'm, ha- uh, I'm happy to wait until the end of the draft yeah. to see how it all. No, no, no. It's it's just it's a general comment we often have on Big Footy where something happens and the whole board just kind of explodes that the sky is falling. Yeah, um, I think so PJ, I was kind of alluding to that overall. I think PJ is right. I don't think Crows would do that trade, Donk. I think they'll they'll go they'll take those picks to the draft. But um, yeah. I, I think um, uh, they've got a very, very strong hand now. They've got five, ten, and fifteen port. They've um, they've done very well. They've done well. You have to, uh, but it has cost them. But I just think that some of the players that they've used, um, they you know they they may well not miss. So they're they're probably you know um, to an extent, Nikki, you, you're probably right. I mean, I think that 
you know, even the most ardent port supporter would accept that they're not going to be challenging next year. Um, and we may still have another shot to fire there, but they've certainly put themselves in a very, very good position in a draft that um, um, that you want to be a part of. Mm. Well, it's certainly uh, all of the whole conversation of the evening, hasn't it? And they picked up Ryan Burton as well, which is a very good pickup. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, you know that's a big so side. They, you know, five, I'm not I'm not five, that impressed with him. Five, ten, fifteen, and Burton. Um, I, I reckon that's a pretty good haul. Anyway, look, um, uh, it's 20 past nine, so let's uh, get into our segments. Uh, shall we start, Macca, with your sweets and smacks? Fiend, sorry if you're on the hop there, but um, if we can switch to uh, the segments. Oh, yes, I am a old man. That's what I am. And I really don't care who knows it. Well, <laughs> you go, mate? well, everything's turned a little bit upside down. But and I've got I've got zero sweets because there's not much happening uh, in our in our world. Jeez, uh, what's that? Um, not much happening in our world to uh, be to give any sweets out. But in terms of smacks, it's the AFL I'd like to target here, and basically it's the two uh, new clubs that they brought in, which is the Gold Coast and GWS. The Gold Coast, all they've created is a great big money-consuming failure that can never, ever succeed. And, you know, as long as my backside points the ground, they'll never be any good. They will never be any good. And um, they made a massive blue when they did. They should have given North Melbourne the ultimatum. You go to up there or else. Uh, but, you know, to, people to establishing sides up there, it just doesn't work. Um, the, the, so big, big whack to the AFL for the big money pit they're throwing down there to create a mess that then they're going to be they're going to be virtually be the buy next week next year when everybody plays them, um, and also they, if I understand correctly, as Nicky was alluded to before, that they're run by virtually by the AFL. Uh, this fiasco where that's happening at trade time at the moment, um, no, no good at all. Uh, it's. Uh, to, to the Victorian clubs, the, some of the Victorian clubs are getting benefit of potentially very good players for, you know, for peanuts, and uh, it should never have got to that stage. You, you plan, every club should be planning uh, appropriately, and this one, if, if it's controlled by the, uh, the AFL, well, then they have really made, I mean, if it was done by somebody other than them, I think they'd be probably having a crack at them. And uh, so the AFL is my, my first big smack. And the second one is, uh, not Ryan Burton, but our Burton. Uh, the yeah! Man, the man in charge of football. Is he? What, what, I've never heard a bloody peep out of this bastard. I mean, he, we've been on TV once for the year and made an absolute fiasco of himself and the club. And so, uh, yeah, so another great big slap for him. He's still a dickhead. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, <laughs> so... Uh... I quite liked um, some stuff I uh, heard from Polak this morning. So it's not actually, he's not the cockwomble, but I think the implication of it was why he was kind of happy to go to North Melbourne. Where he said, oh, yeah, they're just a, um, I've just come from a, a club that's like a, a small team in a town and I'm going to another one. <laughs> it's like, whoops, it's a nice little slap for Port. So I thought that was quite funny. Um, we didn't get into it um, because we got some held up for the, um, all the other shows, but the, the new rule changes that are apparently going to speed things up. I don't think they're really going to speed things up that much. I, th yeah. I think they're stupid, most of them. Which ones in particular, Nikki? Oh, the well, you've got to be in certain starting positions at the, the start of a, when a, like, in the, a bounce. Well, they, they're not going to bounce because most of them are shit at it. Um, ball up in the, the centre ground, you know, centre bounce. That's well, that. That's not going to do anything. 
Can I make one comment then, though? Keep with the the 666 thing. Um, it's going to make winning the centre bounces so critical, though, because, you know, people used to have one or two men in loose in defence and uh, running from the back line forwards. But with the 666 situation, it's going to be very important to uh, win the centre bounces. There's a couple of them I didn't mind. There was the one with the – they're doing away now with the kick to yourself to – run the ball yeah. out of the goal square after behind. That's that speeds the gamer. Yeah. That's um, okay. Well, the been, the that they've been allowing for years players to consistently go over. Yeah. Even when they're just doing a straight kick out. S- silly free to pay in that situation, I think. And the other one I didn't mind was that you can now if you get a fifty meter penalty, you can now just play on from that. So you know you have that silly situation where yeah. you've got a player guarding the, the, the person being pulled up the fifty meters and they they've got to, you know, walk all the way up. Then the zone resets, and then they quite often it's a you know it's a penalty on the team that gets the fifty, if it's you know from the defensive um, area. Yeah. Now you can just play on. Yeah. Well, for me, I've always I liked the well, one thing I do like in the SNFL is that twenty five meter penalty for things when they are holding up um, players and deliberately doing so, and we see that a lot with a lot of the 15-minute penalties that is a, oh, he's kind of got hold of me, but I'm lying on him and we can't get out. So it's, you know, helping their teammates out. Um, I, I think it will, it's kind of been positioned to get rid of some of that, whereas I actually do think the AFL should probably bring in the 25-metre penalty for some of the more minor infractions, but I don't think they will because it's an SNFL thing and there's still that angst there. So I, I'm with you, Pete. I, I like that one, but I... The whole thing about the structures at the, the start of the game that is going to speed the game up, and it's not. It's, yeah. Well, I want to see how many goals Brody Smith kicks from running out of the uh, running out after a point at the SCG. I, think it's going to be <laughs> I know. I loved. I did love Brody Smith's tweet. Um, he, he just asked to check that uh, Rory Laird wants to know if it counts as a stat. It won't. <laughs> Uh, but back to the cock humble, Nikki. Yeah. Back to the um, nomination. Uh, probably the, uh, the the Chris Davies comment um, at that breakfast. I mean, that's a bit of a, a doozy. You kind of don't go and do things like that. But it seems to have worked for them because they might end up with pick five. Uh, so I'll it not, might not be I'll nominate the, the trade talk show on Channel 9 um, where they regurgitate with the latest, they say. The latest, it's about eight hours old when they when they put it up there, and they just go through what you could read on the uh, AFL site. A pretty worthless show, I thought. I'm going to um, chime in with the nomination, seeing as I was on a roll from last week. This you did very me, well last week. For me, this week's nomination goes to um, Macker. I'll, I'll direct this to you, and we'll just leave the other two out of it for a moment. <laughs> but Macker, if you follow Twitter, uh, no, you, Pete. Hey, don't. If that's what I think it is, um, there's been discussion offline today about that. Don't. Okay. That's my uh, one nomination gone then. Well, yes. I, I don't know what it's going to be. No, Mac. don't. Macca, no. We'll just leave it at that. Nikki, you're a long-standing member of the cast. I absolutely respect if you don't want it spoken about, then we won't speak about it. Any other nominations? <laughs> um, I'm, uh, DSG thinks the Scully deal um, going through the end of day I I think there's some iffy some iffy ones that have been done, but uh, I think we'll I think we'll we'll definitely have some doozies next week because there's going to be a flurry of movement tomorrow. Mm, yeah, I think you're right. It'll all happen. It'll all happen tomorrow. The mega deal will go down and. Um, uh, I guess we just hold out some faint hope that uh, that we're part of it in some way, shape, or form. Particularly, um, uh, you know, I guess as we get to um, closer to the draft. Hmm. Yeah, there actually there weren't too many actually cockwombles this week. Not really. I was Ricky Dixon might earn one. Yeah, he's just always an idiot. <laughs> All right, let's have a winner. You're, God, you're, you're... Is there even, I don't think there really is one this week because they're kind of a bit pathetic. Yeah. Give it to the AFL. Give it to the <laughs> AFL, why not? 
Yeah, we always like doing it to them. That'll do. What about the Marsh Brothers? Can we give it to them instead? Oh, Jason McClure uh, said, McKay, <laughs> sorry, McKay. Oh, McClure. McClure, yeah, no, look, that is a very obvious one. Oh, he's always a cock ball, yeah. Yeah, look, it's just because he is McClure, we can give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, J-Mac, for saving us. Sam McClure, come on down, you idiot. Is McClure just going to be the standing Womble nomination? Whatever it is. He's, a, he's the default. Yeah, he's the <laughs> default. <laughs> if it's not the AFL or Port, it's him. That uh, sounds like the wind up. Thanks very much for joining us, everybody. Thanks, Nikki, Donk, and um, Maka. Appreciate all your comments tonight, and hopefully next week we'll be back with, uh, with Fiend at the helm. Night, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Good night, all.